In this video, we're going to change the raw water impeller on a Volvo Penta D130 marine diesel engine. Internal combustion engines need to be cooled, and most modern marine diesel engines use a sealed freshwater circuit for the principal job of cooling. This draws heat from the hottest parts of the engine, but then it needs to get rid of that heat. In your car, this is done by the radiator, but an engine installed deep in the bowels of a boat doesn't have easy access to cool fresh air, but it does have easy access to water. Seawater enters at the Kingston Cock, goes through a strainer to catch any debris, and is then pumped up via an anti-siphon valve into a heat exchanger in the engine. Here, it washes over the pipes of the freshwater circuit, removing heat as it goes, and then uses the exhaust gases to help it blow it out of the back of the boat. As part of your regular maintenance, you need to check the water strainer and the impeller that runs the pump, and periodically, the impeller needs changing. First job then is to remove the water strainer, and as soon as you unscrew the lid, the water in the inlet will drain out of the seacock. Lift out the basket and remove any debris, and then you can put the basket back. At this stage, it's worth leaving the lid off. So we're in the side cabin, because this is the way we access the Kingston cock, which is how we seal uh, the water intake for the raw water in the engine. And it's down here, and you'll see there, that's where it's joining the sail drive and that's the Kingston cock itself. We've done that. Um, right, are we here? Uh, yeah, we're golden. <laughs> right. But we will get the dribble out of that pipe. So there's an elbow up there which is an anti-siphon elbow. So the amount of water that's going to come out is just going to be the amount of water that's in this pipe here. Um, crack that part, crack this open. Okay. Okay. That's long quite configurable. With such a small impeller, a pair of water pump pliers are all you really need, but on larger engines, an impeller extractor is the best tool for the job. There's the old one out. So this is the replacement part. Very expensive item. So what I've done this time is I'm using a slightly cheaper version, which is this one, which as you see says Volvo Penta. Hopefully has all the right bits in it. So there's the impeller. And then we've got um, gaskets. That one looks like the one that we want. So you'll see if you lay that on, that one's the right gasket. And if you lay this one on, that one's the gasket, clearly for an, a different housing. So we can throw that one away, and that one's the gasket that we want. There we go. Right. A little bit more gasket lubricant here. Um, interestingly, when you get the cheap parts you don't get any gasket lubricant and you get the Volvo one you get a little sachet of uh, suitable lubricant greasing it all up to make it all nice and pliable the greasier it is the easier theoretically the easier this will slide into the pot but it's a small one this one so I don't think it's going to be as big a problem as I'm used to in fact look that looks like it's done Gosh, that was easy. I've got to make sure we get everything lined up though. So let's put the, um, which way around does it go? Oh, I see, it goes, it goes that way. Like that. 
goes there. Final task then, put the lid back on the strainer and seal the system up tight. Obviously, this needs to be lubricated and then put that in there and that should make a good solid seal. I think it's worth inspecting the old one when it comes out to see uh, what kind of condition it's in. And you see there, that's just a split there. Now that's the only damage on this one. But I'm sure you can imagine the mayhem if parts of this sheared off. It's very likely to cause blockages in the cooling system. Regular maintenance should prevent this from happening. But just in case, I fit an exhaust alarm. A temperature probe is pushed into the exhaust pipe close to the elbow. And if the raw water stops running for any reason, the temperature in the exhaust pipe will rise very quickly. And within a few seconds, the alarm will sound. This alarm goes off long before the engine itself overheats, which buys you time to take action to protect your crew, boat and engine. I've been thankful for this on all of my last three boats. And last time the alarm went off was when the raw water pump failed whilst we were at sea. There's a video all about it here and in the links below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.